Welcome to America. 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 Alright, y'all. So we are back again. Young Black America. Of course, this is Randall. This is Paul. I'm born. We want to talk a little bit about the, the Olympics. This was an amazing Olympics. Some amazing things happened. Um, you know, great things, especially for America. America did pretty well. I saw a statistic that said that this was the best that, um, I think in, a, in 1984, the year I was born, America had done like, they had got like 172 medals or something like that, which is crazy, right? It's crazy. We didn't do that much, but this is the best that we've done since that 32 years ago. And I think we did something like 113 more good scene at least. Once or, or, yeah. or maybe maybe it was like 131 or something like that. But somewhere in that vicinity, somewhere between like around the area of 115 to like 130 or something like that, right? So we had a pretty good Olympics. What we just want to talk really quickly about some major takeaways from the Olympics. So uh, we'll start with Randall. Randall. Some takeaways that um, that you are you are taking away from the Olympics 2016 in Rio. Uh, man, it's there's so much, man. I, I mean, one thing is Usain Bolt. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, he he is truly a cross cultural icon. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, to be honest with you, there was so much pride I had when I seen him uh, kind of just applauded and, and kind of um, like having specials on NBC about him. He's from another country. You know, we're still praising this man for not only what he does and did on the um, on the track, man, but uh, in the community and, and off the track, and like his character, right? He actually, I saw a video of him um, pausing an interview that he was doing to pay respect to the uh, USA mm -hmm. uh, national anthem being mm -hmm. played. Yeah. Right? Wow. So he, he listened to it all, turned in reverence, came back and finished the interview. Right, so something like that, man. I really, you know, I'm I'm, I'm proud of him. I'm proud that that he, he's a he's a dark skinned brother. That, you that's and I are from Jamaican descent. Right, right, right. So, um, yeah, man, that that just really, really, really resonated with me and filled me with a lot of pride. Um, and and then I'll just say this briefly too, Gabby Douglas and, and kind of how she's mm -hmm. been, you know, um, yeah. kind of ridiculed mm -hmm. and criticized for. You know how she paid reverence to the national anthem, or didn't in some mm -hmm. people's mind. Um, how she's kind of now separate from the final five ladies, mm -hmm. and you know just the whole you know um, conversation about that. Um, a star but, contrast to four years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah star yeah. contrast. But, but I'm glad she at least got a gold medal. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, yeah, that's amazing to see how things turn around. Yeah. And if we say turn around, like. It's not like, she, I mean, she got a gold medal. True, right. true, true. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> some people took some of the things like her, her stands at the Olympics out of context. When you've seen a bunch of pictures of a bunch, whether white or black athletes, and before and after that, who, um, who, um, who were standing with their hands in front of them, what have you, know, they're laughing or laughing or what have you, know what I'm saying? Um, amazing. So, Man, there were a bunch of things. The first thing that came to my mind just now was, uh, the 400 meter race with oh, uh, that guy. Man. I think it's from no. no, so South Africa. Yeah, South Africa. Africa. Oh. Where they ran point zero three broke the record. Michael Johnson. Yeah. yeah. Michael Johnson, he was one of my favorite guys <laughs> yeah. growing up. And so he was the only one, I think, still to this day to win the 200 and 400 mm -hmm. at the same Olympics. Mm -hmm. uh, but the way that he did that, man, especially running in that eighth lane, he had nobody mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. you know, chase or yes, he, he was, was just running, running, running. running. And so that was crazy. That was probably the first thing that stood out to me. But like you said, uh, Usain Bolt, man, and just, just thinking about the things that he's done as well as Michael Phelps. I mean, you know, off the, well, off the court, but <laughs> out of the pool, you know, he has different things. But in the pool, man, this cat, 23 gold medals, 28 medals total overall. Um, and then just kind of the dominance of the U.S. women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yo, the women the really women killed. Yeah, yeah, they really killed it. And mm -hmm. um, just thinking about mm -hmm. Simone Biles, the way that she almost took home five goals, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but she got four goals. Kate and a bronze. Kate 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 Kate. Uh, Simone, Simone Manuel, uh, yeah, Simone Manuel the black swimmer. 
Uh, was she the first black swimmer to win gold? I believe so. Yeah. U.S. swimmer? Yeah. Yeah. So, individual. individual. And so, you know, just amazing accomplishments from the, the women in particular and uh, black women as well. And uh, it's just great to see that, you know, there was like, I don't know, if, I don't know if you guys thought this, but there was like a lot of kind of negative energy I felt going into this Olympics. Oh, yeah, yeah certainly. You know, especially just being in Rio and those yeah. kind of things. Yeah. And, and it turned out to be one of the greatest Olympics. Like, yeah, I think so. like it was a very well run. Yeah, like sure. it, everybody had these negative uh, perceptions of it, and it turned out to be one of the greatest yeah. Olympics to watch. Um, yeah. Did y'all yeah. see the open opening ceremony? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't even yeah. see it. I heard it was amazing. Yeah, because I mean, it, it truly depicted like the entire history, the, the ugly, you know, the beautiful aspects of, of its history. Um, in, in Brazil, you know, like from slavery to you know all that stuff, man. Um, brought in different artists, musical artists yeah. from, from all kind of different uh, ethnic backgrounds, man. It was, it was powerful to see. Nice. Yeah. Right. What are you? What was your takeaway? My takeaway. <laughs> takeaways. I sure have some takeaways now. One of the things that stood out, um, you know, just if, if I think about moments that really, really stood out to me, I remember when I was watching. I think they were awarding. The, um, I think it was when they were awarding the girl, the three girls that won the hurdles. Oh, the one um, the one, the 100 meter hurdles. Yeah, they swept. Yeah. And um, they, yeah, they swept. And I think they they were awarding the one that that won gold. And the lady that was putting the gold medal on her neck, or had was giving her that like, other thing, I forgot which one, was like said to her, "I'm proud of you, black girls rock." You know, and I thought that was like I was watching as it happened. I was like, wow! Like it was just amazing to me that that moment got captured on mm -hmm. like live mm -hmm. television. Um, you know, um, and I just thought that that was amazing uh, because certainly women in general did well at the Olympics um, uh, for, for America, uh, and certainly black women stood out a lot at these Olympics. Man, so certainly uh, was, uh, was that was that was a nice moment to see. Um, and then, what else stood out? The the whole thing with Lofty, you know, the swimmer, unfortunately, like just just painting this negative, um, this, this negative aura on onto the Olympics, you know, which turned out to be such a great Olympics. But then, that had to happen, um, and it, I was just thinking like, just the damage that it caused. I know I heard one of his other one of his teammates had to pay eleven thousand dollars to like a charity just to get out of the Brazil to go back home to the US like so just like you know thinking about your actions and just how much your actions can cost other people and imagine like you, you us being such a privileged country it, it goes back to one of those like the, what we talked about with um, Donald Trump before like people in this place of privilege you know especially when like a, a white male sometimes and by all means I haven't truthfully most of my white male friends have never like acted like this right but it just, but you know that it happens in, to for some others for, for you to just make a country seem, you know, th this country who does not have the same type of resources that we have or what have you, but to paint this picture of it as if it's like a bad place or what have you, man, like, like, it's just not right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was the Certainly. things I didn't like about that whole situation was that, like we were talking about, there were negative perceptions already mm -hmm. of Rio mm -hmm. and just corruption and those kind of things mm -hmm. leading up to the Olympics. And so, you know, to kind of play on those perceptions mm -hmm. that people already had, you know, because even when I initially heard the situation, I wasn't surprised because I had heard that Rio was cool. So I was like, well, I guess I'm not that surprised. Yeah. That it was bound to happen at some point. Yeah. Like and then, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And so even me, I, I fell yeah. into that trap. Yeah. So now, and then the whole rest of the week was kind yeah, of, it yeah, took yeah, over the whole story. Yeah, that's that's like an underlying story yeah. the whole time, taking away from yeah. all the great accomplishments. And it's unfortunate because even like when as we do these videos here, you know, um, my father, I remember, to me earlier this week, and he was like, yo, unfortunately, negative news always gets more attention than positive is true. Um, you know, whereas you have these, you, you have my, us, you have a few other people out there who are trying to do positive things with video, with social media, what have you, to impact and empower the black community. And not just the black community, you want to see everybody um, living and doing well. But, Unfortunately, the foolishness gets way more attention than, than this stuff gets, you know what I'm saying? The stuff that's not really going to do anything for people's lives is what gets more attention. And so we see that in the whole Lockheed incident, um, that unfortunately his foolishness got way more attention than all the good stuff that was happening at the Olympics. But um, 
you know, some, 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 and I'll leave y'all with this, you know, some of y'all at home with this, some of the things that I, I really took away when I was thinking about like, yo, what, what can we actually learn from the Olympics, right? So some of this came to mind. I was, the, 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 I was like, yo, you got to do it while you're young. Saying like, and shout out though to um, I heard ET and I'm talking about the 41 year old gymnast, mm -hmm. right? Um, and yeah, I was researching, I saw that tumble, but you know what I'm saying? You can laugh at the tumble or what have you, but yo, she's 41 <coughs> years old yeah. and she's been at all the Olympics since I think like 1976 or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. You know what I'm saying? To to imagine to make it to all those, and she's represented like three or four different countries. Saying, um, I think she represented Russia at one point and a couple of other um, countries, her home country. So, um, yeah, man. But 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 at the same time, we know that's few and far in between. And you know, you look at sports. Sports is a little bit different than business because business, you can kind of have. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk talks about this often. Where business, you can have the longevity in spite of your age, really. You know, but still at the same time. It's better if you can set yourself up from a young age, you know what I'm saying? Like most people who are, who are doing well, who live well, you know, into their older age, they started from a young age. And so when I looked at the Olympics, I was like, yo, when I look at Michael Phelps, Allison Felix, Usain Bolt, Sean Merritt, Natasha Hastings, Simone Biles, Simone Manuel, you know what I'm saying? All, all these different athletes, these are all people who from the time they've been young, at least from the time of like high school, have been putting in work. Some of them I was privileged to be there and see them in action firsthand when I used to go up against them putting in work. So, um, you know, so maximizing that time, Usain Bolt is going down. He might seem like an old man as far as track and field goes, but he's 30. Yeah, yeah you know, but, <laughs> and, but 30, yo, you look at um, what my man's name is, Justin Gatlin. I'm surprised Justin Gatlin is running because I think, is yeah. he 34 or is it 35 or 36? Is it 34? No, I think 34, 30? yeah. Okay, 34, but 34, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the end toward the end of your track and field career. That, that's why, you know, Usain Bolt was able to start early. I think this is like his third Olympics, right? Mm -hmm. And, well, no, this is actually his fourth, because I heard them talking about his first Olympics where he really didn't even make it out of the, um, he didn't even make it out of the, the trial, you know what I'm saying? So, but he was only 18 then. But come 22 years old, boom, took advantage. You know, you gotta take advantage of your life while you are young. Um, you know, trust me, like, I mean, we're still considered young here, but I know all of us have certainly, we can look back and be like, yo, if we had done maybe a little something over here, a little something over there, we could be even further ahead than where we are now, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and if you don't mind, man, yeah, uh, right. I mean, that, that's a great point, and, and another thing you made me think of is, what do you do in the meantime? Mm -hmm. Right, so, so in between four years, four years, four years, mm -hmm. what are you good. doing yeah, in that's between, good. you know, the Olympics, right? Because, I mean, that... You could argue for, for some of these sports, like that is the pinnacle, right? Yeah. Like, like there's no greater reward than getting the uh, gold medal or even medal, mm -hmm. right, uh, in the Olympics. But um, basketball, I mean, you, you could argue that. But still, for those sports like track, what are you doing in the meantime to kind of make yep. sure that when, when the you know, lights is on, that, yep. you know, you deliver, right? right. You, you yeah. maximize yep. the moment and, and reach yep. your full potential. So, Let's go. Yo. <laughs> yeah, what, 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 I don't know what, what happened there. Yo. My bad. Like, well, what happened? Yo. The, GPS, yeah. <laughs> the Waze app. This guy is crazy. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> no. <laughs> but to uh, completely agree with you, Randall. And that's the thing. Like, we see these people and they almost disappear for four years. And then we see mm -hmm. them in four years and they're performing at, you know, the maximum yep. potential. You know what I'm saying? So in those four years, man, they're putting in work, mm -hmm. they're putting in work, mm -hmm. man. They're not taking any days off, really. You know, it's a lifestyle. Not a lot. Yeah, it's, it's lifestyle. a whole lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I love that what y'all saying because, and that that's one of the things that I want to be evident in my life. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing that I'm working on currently is that if you should never open your mouth, does your life speak to the work that you're putting in? You feel me? And when I look at these folks, you know, I, I'm looking at. I remember it was like looking at some of the, the track and field athletes, especially, you know what I'm saying, people who I've seen in person, like Natasha Hastings or what have you, from when she was in high school, and I'm like, yo, if you just look at their body, you look at Usain Bolt's body, 
Like, he doesn't have to say anything. His body looks like he's been putting in work, you know what I'm saying? Then still before he says anything, when he goes out there, and when these other athletes go out there, even, I don't care if it's the slowest of the athletes, I don't care if it's the athlete that did the worst in the Olympics. Every single athlete still out there looks like they put in more work than the average person, yeah. you, know, you know, and that they've been doing this for quite some time. So, so you know, like, just, just, just making sure that when nobody's watching, that you're still putting in the work, you know, you're still, whether it's, whether it's uh, some of the people that might be watching, if you're a student, still putting in their school work, if you're a person who might be at your job, putting in that work, or maybe you might not have a job and you've been looking, but, but you know, doing all that you can to make yourself ready and available for when the, a job does come in. Like, these people are putting it in even when nobody's paying attention to them and that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing that I would say that I um, took away, not the last thing, but this is one of the things that, um, and I wrote it down here, like, you can be forgiven when someone else messes you up, but second chances are harder to over, or harder to come by when you're the one that's messing yourself up. And the reason why I thought about that, I thought about the four by one. Um, and in the trial, he's in, you know, the, the women, they were running, um, they got messed up, they got hit, they got elbowed um, by another team. I, th I forgot what team was. It might have even been Brazil yeah, or Australia, Australia, something like yeah, that. Brazil. Brazil. Right, so 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 that took them out. Like that basically messed up their whole race, and but they but because it wasn't their fault, they were able to protest to the judges. The judges gave them a chance to run it by themselves. They ran by themselves and ran the fastest of all the heats. And then they went into the finals. They had to run out of lane one, which if you know track and field, lane one and lane whatever. Well, some well if it's a small track, lane six, but a lane six or lane eight or lane nine, the outer lane, the outermost lane on the track is usually. That and the innermost lane are usually the two worst lanes that you want to run in, right? Mm -hmm. So they gave them basically what was considered the worst lane, and they still came out and won the gold medal, right? Um, but they got a second chance because they weren't the ones that messed themselves up. But I look at the men's U.S. team now, mm -hmm. right, versus as opposed to now the women's team. The women's team ended up winning, but the men's team, they, look, they saw what happened to the girls in the trials, but the men's team did perfectly fine in the trials. But then all of a sudden, they in the finals, and off of one of the handoffs, they did not make sure that they were inside the zone before the handoff um, was mm -hmm. taking place, mm -hmm. right? And so that wasn't something that happened because of somebody else messed them up. That was a mistake that was all on their own. Mm -hmm. And guess what? They, as far as them getting around the track, they got they would have gotten third, right? But then all of a sudden, they, and I felt so bad because they're thinking that they got it. They're walking around with the flag and then realize that they don't have it. And, and, and there's no coming back from that. There's nothing to protest. Why? Because this was a mistake that you made. You know what I'm saying? And so I, when I look back at my own life and I think of, you know, where I, I look at where I've dropped the ball and I'm like, man, like, it, like it, no doubt about it. Like, I can't do anything about that. You know what I'm saying? And nobody, I'm not going, I might have missed out on some opportunities in certain places, right? But then I also thankful for the places where I maximize or or maybe something happened but it you know it wasn't my like something happened that I couldn't control right. you know what I'm saying and people tend to be um, you know you tend to get a second chance for that so um, you know don't don't make unnecessary mistakes you know what I'm saying don't do it or if something's gonna happen let it be because, be because something happened outside of your control um, but don't let it be because of your messing yourself up you're tripping yourself up. You're taking yourself out of the race. So, man, um, we got a lot done today. This is Coach Vaughn, Paul Bissant, the, ma the maestro, <laughs> Randall File. I'm just giving them names, y'all. <laughs> Randall File, the academic advisor. And uh, we'll see y'all next week on a couple more episodes, man. If y'all didn't see some of the other episodes that we dropped, make sure that y'all check them out, all right? Uh, and subscribe to us on Instagram. Uh, on YouTube and all these other places, social media stuff. Um, what else do I have out there? Facebook and stuff. I'll put like the links down here at the bottom of the screen and stuff like that. All right? Oh, average is failure. Character is legendary. Right? Success is internal. Right? Let's keep on getting it, y'all. Peace.